Well, thanks, Nathan, first of all, for inviting, because, you know, this gives a person a nice chance to come down on their first time in his lifetime, which is a very nice experience. <laughs> and uh, I really enjoy it. This is a lifelong dream to come to Australia, for sure. I would even be gladder if I could go one step further to New Zealand, but that's not happening, unfortunately, this time, but maybe next time, hopefully. Uh, I'm here to talk about twin motion, and I'll explain in a while why. But first of all, I would just like to have a little bit off topic here. So guys, tomorrow I'm doing a session on stairs and railings. Uh, is it possible for you to go up on the Notion page this night or tomorrow morning and download the training file so that you can join me in actually completing the task? Because I think it will be much more better you know, to hand, have an actual hands-on rather than just me showing demo stuff on the screen. Okay? So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I have to give him a file, but don't do it now, do it later, after the drinks. Okay. Uh, um, so much for tomorrow, but today I'm going to talk about Twin Motion and do a small demo for you. Uh, and there's going to be a good question of why a Grafisov guy have, came, have come to uh, do a Twin Motion demo for you. And first of all, what is Twin Motion and why is Twin Motion a topic these days? So. You, or slash your kids, <laughs> possibly, if, uh, might know Fortnite, which I have never tried in my life, but I heard that it's very amazing and that a lot of kids are playing it. And because of that, Epic Games, their owner, have, you know, gained a lot of funding. And they decided that they don't even want to be uh, restricted to the gaming business. They also want to re reach out to the AEC industry, which is, of course, one place which... Uh, which they want to participate in. So for that, um, a collaboration has begun between, uh, between Twinmotion and Epic Games, and which eventually ended up them buying the software itself, which used their free Unreal Engine, which is freely available for, all, uh, for, all, for everyone, basically, to develop your own platforms over there. Uh, first of all, what is uh, Unreal Engine, and why is that important for us? It would be much more accurate if I could show here Unreal Studio, or that's what should be written here. Unreal Studio is their photorealistic, also real-time, but very high-performance and interactive rendering software. It provides easy collaboration. Uh, it has a public source code, but basically every, everyone can use it. But it does require a very high level of software knowledge, and uh, it does require um, you know, a high level of hardware requirements, etc. So basically, Unreal Studio as it is, it provides us with CGI-like uh, graphical qualities. So this is, for example, an, an interior design render made with the Unreal Studio and Unreal Engine, which is obviously extremely high quality. But they, as this is realized, they also wanted to, to, to have something for the average Joe for the average architect who are much more uh, interested in having an interactive interface, a straightforward solution for solving these issues and at this, uh, solving these visualization tasks and at the same time have something fun to play with. So for that, they have Twin Motion, which uses the Unreal Engine, the graphical engine itself, but also provides real-time uh, visualization. You can produce images and videos, or a BIM motion file, which, is, which I'll explain later what it is. And it has a very straightforward and simple, simple user interface. And that's Twinmotion's main uh, advantage. And also, it looks very pretty. So you can do a lot of things with, uh, with it. You can have different export and output options, but also do construction animation, uh, and at the same time, have a VR environment, which is very important nowadays to have a virtual reality around our building. And for example, for the client, that means most. Uh, just one example. For example, uh, right hand side was to emotion generated with, of course, the required settings in about 0.2 seconds. And on the left hand side, with old um, and previous rendering techniques, with about one and a half hours of rendering time generated. And it looks pretty much dissimilar. I mean, if we would go into the details, we could see some differences. But at the same time, I'm guessing that for most of us, the, the right hand side would do in 0.2 seconds, right? So, um, and also the difference between the two. On the left hand side, we see a classical 
the classic rendering environment where we have lots of settings and lots of tweaks and we actually need to know a lot of things. And on the right hand side, you see Twinmotion, just very user friendly environment, very user friendly interface about setting up certain stuff. And, um, and this is what we're going to learn about today. So coming back to the question of why a GraphSoft guy has come to you to talk about Twinmotion itself. Uh, we have a collaboration since 2019 now with Epic Games because they also want to join the AEC industry and we're glad to help them in that. So we have a collaboration for Arcade 23 so that every Arcade 23 user who has a license will get the, eventually the one, the, tw the Twinmotion 22, which is a new Epic Games enhanced version of Twinmotion 19. Because Twinmotion 19 now is free, it was, usually, it was previously developed by Advent, but now Epic has given them their development force, given them their uh, development resources as well, and now Twinmotion 2020 is going to be like that. What would be even better today, if I could show you Twinmotion 2020, which I have installed on this machine, by the way, on a beta version, Unfortunately, since Epic Games still at this point didn't come out with the official release, I am not quite allowed to show <laughs> this on main stage. However, just look for me in the break or afterwards. Uh, anyway, uh, the point of this is that today I'm going to mainly do the things that I'm doing in, uh, in Twinmotion 2019, which is free for all of you, so download it and start using it because it's very fun. Uh, how can you download? You go to the Epic Games website. First of all, you have to uh, download the Epic Games launcher, then eventually you download Twinmotion and launch it. What's even more important that we have a live plugin Barbara is going to explain Enscape's live plugin, I'm sure, in the second part. So you will see a resemblance between the two software and how they work very similarly and it can achieve very similar results with the two software. And it's very interesting to see how you can compare two real-time visualization software to each other. And that's why I'm using, uh, uh, in the first part of the demo, I will also use the file that Barbara uses for her, just for you so that you can see the, the difference between the two software. Okay, so just make sure to download the, the plugin as well. How many of you have already done that before I go into any uh, conclusions? That's very good, so yeah, that is the task. And uh, now I'm actually going to switch to uh, Oricad and start the uh, connection. So as you see, uh, wait a second, I just turn on magnifier. So as you see over here, uh, I already have the Twinmotion 2019 installed, and on the right-hand side, that is Twinmotion 2020, but I will be very careful not to touch that today. Uh, normally, if you know, if you install, if you install the, uh, the, the plugin, you will have this little toolbar appearing in the Arcade interface. If now I would click on the synchronize with Twinmotion right away, because I have already updated my live connection to the 2020 version, it would automatically start that. So to actually make it work, I just have to click on the Twinmotion 2019 to directly import into that. So that's the extra step that I'm doing only because I don't have, uh, I can't show you the 2019 yet, okay? But otherwise, everything uh, will work the same way. So going back to Arcad, um, you are familiar if you have installed the plugin itself, there you can access a number of settings within the Twinmotion Live connection as well. Often, we do not click on this button, but it's important to know what, di what difference what kind of different um, solutions can we have by clicking on the different options? So first, the first thing that, that you see, and I will try to zoom in if uh, it's, uh, it is at all possible. Yes, magnifier, please work. No, it doesn't. Okay, whatever. I'll just click it then. I hope you can see. But anyway, there are two options basically uh, over here under merge. If it's by, merge by materials, then nor merge at all. What do you think that means? Merging, so merging everything by material, that would mean that every surface that, so the, every element that has the same surface will become one object within Twinmotion. So you have basically over, control over the surfaces themselves and not the individual elements. However, if you have the, uh, the no merge option, that that will create individual elements for you uh, regardless of the surface that it's using. The, 
Also, a second important difference is that in Twinmotion, we'll have something that we call layers. In, if we use the simple method, so the by materials method, then everything under the layers wouldn't be listed by ArcGAD layer. They would be listed by surface, and under the surface, you would see the elements. If you use the merge option, the no merge option, sorry, if you use the norm, no merge option, then you would actually see your ArchiGAD layers and elements under that. So just be aware that that, that is a big difference when exporting to, to Emotion. Now I'm going to use the buy materials just uh, because that gives me the best performance now. Uh, we have control over directly uh, substituting the ArchiGAD materials with Twinmotion's materials. I'm using this now because basically won't use the surfaces that I have set up in ArcGAN and Twinmotion, luckily, there are much more nicer service catalogs that we have at this moment. Uh, we can have an optimization, and this, I, I draw your attention to this little guy over there, because it's very important to have this setting if you're working with highly detailed projects, because you can have the access to exclude objects smaller than some kind of value. So in case you have many little, many little objects and uh, a big polygon count in your project, then I suggest to filter out those elements that you don't really want to send out to Emotion. Um, okay, so the other ones I won't really talk about now because they're not important in uh, today. But what happens if I press the live connection? Obviously it will bump me into uh, into a dialog. You have all seen this if you have installed the plugin. I'm just going to select the new project now to see the uh, see how it streams my project into Twinmotion. Oh, very nice, right? So what is that? So whenever we import a file into Twinmotion, you see that it creates something that we call uh, uh, a, like a, a base geometry, like a base plane. Actually, you could find this over here in the library as well, but I'm just going to delete it for now. Um, I have this funny green color for a reason, but you'll, I'll get to that later. So uh, just so you know, the, uh, um, the interface is quite straightforward. I'm going to go through the individual topics of what, uh, the individual parts of what they do. So first of all, let's see the library itself. The library is, again, a very straightforward part of Twinmotion. Here you have the material catalogs, the certain object types, for example, vegetation, landscape, furnitures, lights, characters, vehicles, volumes, and the user library, that's an important thing. That is basically the place where you would import your own objects and you can use them for various, various tasks within Twinmotion. You can do uh, animated character press with that and so on. So this plane that I have showed you uh, previously, it's, it's under furniture for some reason, but under furniture primitives, you have the starting ground over there. So whenever you want to replace that landscape, that land that you have deleted, just go there and that's how you can do it. Okay, so on the right hand side, we have the layers that I previously mentioned. Now see how uh, different the structure looks. For example, if I have used the no merge option, then over here I would have my ArcCAD layers showing. Now all that I have is by material all of the objects that I have placed over there. But that's good now because I, I'm just using this for a demonstration. Um, okay, what else? Also important, and we often forget this little bar over there, so we have phasing, BIM, BIM information, transform, and statistics that we can uh, change from. So if you're using the phasing dialog here, that's how you can create certain phase, phasing um, groups. And by element, you can assign these uh, elements to a certain phasing state so that during animation, during a, uh, a, let's say a video framing, you can show which phasing should be, should be uh, in that frame and which shouldn't. So that's how you create that. Um, BIM information, that is in case we uh, export um, certain, certain properties, transform and statistics, statistics for how your machine is performing during the actions. Over here on the, uh, on the bottom part, that's what we have, uh, where we have a number of options. And I just want to show you uh, a few things. So we have the import button. This is where if I, 
would have had internet connection this morning because unfortunately my machine somehow didn't pick it up that I could download it from my OneDrive, which I was planning to do, but I don't have it now, so I won't import an object for you today. However, if I import an object over there, I can use it as a custom object in my user library, and I can set up certain things with the help of it. It's very easy, very straightforward. It, uh, it can open up OBGs, it can open up uh, SKP files, so mostly if you, if you are logged into a Google warehouse, it's very easy to download any custom object and use it within Twinmotion uh, very quickly. Uh, second option, and what we, what we see over there, this is the urban menu, and under that you see context, path, camera align, and measure tool. From that, I think what's most relevant for all of us is the context, where you can set up the background for the, uh, for the interface, and context when you can, if you click on that, you can actually search for the location of the, of the project that you have and basically screenshot grab the 3D environment in a very basic form, in a very basic blocks that you can use as a surrounding and a, as a context. Um, paths, over here we have a number of paths, character path, vehicle path, bicycle path, and the custom path. The custom path is only interesting for us because this is the one that uses the custom objects. So the way that you can have you can use your custom objects on animated paths within Twinmotion. It's this menu, so this is where you have to uh, drag and drop them. Um, let's go over here. So very simple things. Uh, location, you can give it a, an actual geolocation so you get the uh, accurate, um, accurate weather, the, um, sun data, and et cetera, and lighting, and, uh, and information based on the actual date and time. Uh, we can set the weather, the lighting, uh, and here is where we have the vegetation paint options, and I'll get to that later. And we have the ocean as well. Uh, we have uh, a presentation stage, so the media, where I can create my images, create uh, panoramas, videos, edit and cut videos, and eventually export a BIM motion file, which is um, one that you can send to your clients it's basically like a snapshot of the of the uh of the um, free word 3d environment that you have in twinmotion it, these files are quite huge i have to say so you have to have a quite big capacity uh storage capacity in order to send these so i'm when i'm saying huge i'm saying from one gigabyte to 10 or 12 depending on the uh, actual machine so it's even bigger on max just a side note and uh and you need to care about those. And eventually we have the export option which behaves as a publisher. You just select the certain types that you want to actually publish and then eventually you send it out. So I won't do my things within this file because I have a, already a file that prepared where we can add certain extra elements and where I can, where I can show you uh, certain other things. But right here in the back this morning I just tried out what I can do with Barbara's file and what I can achieve in about half an hour of uh, modeling and a half an hour of additional mm, you know, objects and just animation. So for that, I'll go back to uh, my PowerPoint so that I can show you what I did. I basically did nothing really special, just placed a few objects, uh, placed a few elements, added a surface, or added a landscape that I'm, show I'm going to show you later. And with the help of that, we have a quite good animation. And the rendering time for this video is about two and a half minutes. <laughs> it's about two and a half minutes. And basically just setting up the weather and setting up certain aspects is going to be a very easy way of using uh, Twinmotion itself. So this is about 25 minutes amount of work. And Nathan is very happy about it, luckily. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, let me just open up the file where I'm actually going to work uh, a few uh, things. So that is this project. <gasps> no, that's not the project that I wanted to open. Don't crash. Well, then I can show you this one as well. But this is the one that I have addressed. So there's nothing, no really, uh, no real things that I have done. Just the quite the 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 like let's say the surroundings of the actual house. 
the model wasn't that detailed when we're talking about environment. So just so that you, so that I show you here, the uh, the project looks like this. I have added this funny material to the to the landscape because um, since I can override surfaces based on their material, it's it was much more easy to override the the the, the base material with a with an actual you know, like a different color so that I can drag and drop uh, the, the grass color on it with into motion. Um, what else I have done? Uh, I have added a landscape, which I'm about to show you in the next file, and I have added all of these objects and a few uh, character and animation paths. So nothing really serious. Let me open up the other file. Sample project, yes, no. So while this is opening, what you will actually see is the sample project that we have now available for everyone. So I advise you to download those two, uh, two sample projects that by default GraphSoft gives you. I know it's, we should have done this years ago, but now luckily we have one which is actually working. It's a residential home. It's, it's a very simple structure and you can use it for various reasons just to test out maybe a new template approaches just to test out certain, act uh, certain new features. It will be updated continuously by each version, so it, it's worth, when 24 comes out, for example, that file will be updated with the features of 24. Just make sure to test it out on that file before, before doing anything in yours for the sake of safety. Okay, once, uh, since I have op I'm opening up a new file, I can, uh, and I have actually rematerialize certain things. So I have added new textures to certain uh, surfaces. I have an, my own texture catalog that I can bring in and this is what it asked me to do. And now I'm bringing that in. And once that is done, I have my nice twin motion environment. So this is the sample project that you will all see um, now available for everyone. And this is the one where I have a certain things to show you. First of all, let me just open up my iPad here so I don't miss any topics that I want to show. Okay, first, let's talk about the landscape and the landscaping tool because sometimes that's, that's going to be the most useful for everyone. So, uh, you see this vast, rocky landscape. This obviously wasn't modeled in Archaea because it would be too heavy. So, what you can do in Twinmotion, um, in the library itself, you have under the vegetation and landscape, you can import landscapes. And that is a flat or a rocky glass, grassland. No big differences on the rocky grassland. You have certain hills already placed, but you can modify them exactly the same way. So what I did here, I have drag and dropped the rocky grassland over there. And once uh, you have done that and select it, so you see now everything that is highlighted with this bright, orange color, you, uh, that's what's selected at the moment. And you have two options for handling this project, uh, Sculpt and Paint. So under Sculpt, if I would be a kid, I would really much enjoy this. And if I remember in uh, Cossacks and in Age of Empires in the map editors, usually it was tools like this that you can just you know play around with and create your custom maps. So this is really much the tool that I uh, enjoy to use. You have number of options, extrude, Etc. But here I'm just going to show you a very simple way. So you can edit the diameter of the actual area that you want to modify, the intensity of the extrusion, and the shape of the tools. So now I'm just going to create, oh. that's possibly a little bit too much. Sorry about that. Let's do it this way and let's lower the diameter here so that I can create a nice little lake over there. Quite deep lake. Okay, so once that is done, and you see how straightforward it is, so it's very easy to modify anything. If you want to adjust something, so maybe even out the, the, the surrounding surfaces, you can easily do that with the help of these tools. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show you is the ocean. The ocean is basically an overall level of water that you can, that you can adjust for to a motion. So if I select the ocean and I turn it on, that that would mean that it would be a surface everywhere. So if I see I elevate it up, then you see how it floods my entire area. 
almost as the same way as it, as it is today. But what I'm doing now, I'm just adding this small little water over there. And I will go back to my landscape and I'll just do a little bit more of sculpting so that it's, you know, it's a little bit better. And what else I can do with this tool is uh, under the landscape, I can paint the area. So there's no need to, you know, use, these are automatically generated, but you can correct this, correct these slopes quite easily with the paint tool. Just go over here and, uh, and change the, uh, the paintings quite easily, if it does do it for me now. It should. Oh, yes, okay. So just a little bit of gravel, etc. So it's, it's working pretty smoothly. Uh, what else? Okay. Then, uh, yeah, just a, just a side note. So whenever you select the, uh, the ocean, I'm going back to my ocean settings. You can edit, for example, certain colors. So if it's a tropical river or a muddy river, or it is an Atlantic ocean within my small twin motion file, I can do that as well. Probably now it's going to be a little bit more wise to use a clear river, and that's how it will stay. Um, under vegetation, so in the library you will find certain elements such as uh, trees, grass, flowers, bushes, rocks, and how I can place them individually. So I can go to trees and place trees like that. But what is a little bit more effective is we use the, uh, the, uh, the vegetation tool over here in the toolbox. So if I have vegetation, I can, uh, I can select certain elements. So this, is this little box over here basically works like a, a, a favorites palette in a way. So you drag and drop certain elements from the library over there, which you can then use with these tools. So come on. Yes. And then based on the ones that you select, you can use the vegetation paint tool where you can edit uh, the diameter and the density that you want to paint with them. And then you can paint a nice forest quickly around this area. So probably that is a little bit more effective than placing them individually. Unfortunately, uh, there are only one way to delete them. So either, either, either you delete them uh, one by one uh, or you can use the, uh, the vegetation erase tool, which then just will just help me to erase them over there. Um, this is not only working for trees. So if I go up here and, for example, add also rocks, or things like that in this little dialogue. I can paint with those two. So if I select two rocks and one tree, I can <laughs> see do it like that. And it, it creates something like a rock slide or Hawaii or something. So it's not that it's not that difficult, but I'm just going to get rid of this now to show you something that actually looks okay. All right. So that's the vegetation paint tool, which is very useful. And, and, um, and I, I'm also bringing your attention to why, what I use for navigation. Whenever I'm inside the little dialog, on the left-hand side, you will see the main menu and then every other consequential menu as I'm going deeper and deeper into the, into the settings. So um, and one other thing that is, that is going to be useful for us is the paths. Paths, so the, the character and the vehicle paths. Now this is a nice flooded area, let's not think about that now. But I, what I am actually considering is to, for example, place a biker that is very enthusiastically heading towards the lake downwards in all of my animations. So uh, the path is very easy to edit. You have character paths, vehicle paths, and bicycle paths. Uh, these will behave differently, but all are editable and, and uh, placeable the same way. So whenever you're creating one, you press on this little uh, pen button. And once you start drawing, the path is appearing as it is with its, with its points. And then you can either end it with the right click or either end it with the escape button. And now uh, <laughs> a number of cyclists are heading towards my lake to have a nice afternoon. So uh, let's think about that. What should be the next one? Um, I'm sure that whenever you have tried it out, when you place people, you, try, you tried how they can dance and do everything else. I'm not going to do that joke today. What I might do is, 
for example, um, maybe we'll just have one jackass who is trying to get down over there with his core as well, <laughs> because that seems like a fun joke to do today. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I can even make many lanes of cars heading towards the lake and disappearing on the border of it. They can even go in an insane speed so that they're flying down the road. So it's very easy to edit it, it but it's, uh, it's also straightforward how you do these things because uh, with the G button, it's often not recognized. But for example, with a, with a simple G button, you can hide or unhide these in your views to actually check out what they would look like in normal in, in the renderings. What else you can do, you can uh, take, hold of these, uh, take hold of these points and just drag them along so you can modify the path on the fly. Uh, so that's really not, um, really not hard. Uh, what else you can do, you can elevate them. If I would have the custom object that I was planning to uh, import today, which would have been uh, a Millennium Falcon, you could have a flying Millennium Falcon all around, the all around the building simply by elevating this custom path to a level. Uh, that's very simple. So there's no, uh, so you could, you could just basically use this right straight out of the box. Mm. What's also worth to mention, and just to save a little bit of time for Nathan, I would like to show how the media works and how you can actually do presentations with Twinmotion itself, because that's probably going to be the most interesting part, not necessarily just to pray around with the tools. So the things that you have over here is called the image, the, uh, the, for example, the panorama, the video, and the BIM motion file. So images you can easily, easily create by setting somewhere so you find a suitable location for your image that you want to create, and then eventually at the end of the list you will see, uh, sorry, over here you will see the create image button. Once it's created, you can still modify its time and weather settings, for example, by clicking on this little more button. And then I can add certain things like change the location for that snapshot, change the weather, change the lighting, add a little bit of DOF, which is a depth of field uh, effect. Side note, this depth of field isn't that mm, good in this version, I could say, so it doesn't really make that big of a change. However, in the version 2020, this is amazingly accurate, and, and uh, you can do amazing things with it, uh, which I can't show you, unfortunately. But what I can show you is, uh, once you have created these images, of course, in the publisher, you can, this is the set that you, can, that you can choose in your publisher. Whenever you go here, you just select the images that you're about to uh, export, and that's basically it. What's a little bit more interesting is how you can create videos with the help of, with the help of Twinmotion. And how did I do the one that's already there? Because it already comes with a, kind of like a video editing software built in. It's not that advanced, but it can be used for uh, quick editing and, quick, uh, and, um, and for quick work. So first of all, uh, under the Create button, you have the clips that you are about to, uh, about to uh, make. Every clip can contain multiple viewpoints, and the difference between the video, the viewpoint, and the clip is that out of many viewpoints, there is one continuous clip created with an animation, with a smooth animation like a fly-through uh, uh, animated. If, um, and uh, one video is made out of multiple clips. So if you want to have multiple views of the building on not having transition altogether and not having the dynamics, the way how you can edit it into Emotion is to create the individual clips and then under the video menu under edit, you can then start to create the movie. And the way you create the movie is you place these individual clips that you have created consequently after each other, where you can add certain uh, transitions, for example, fade to black or fade to white, or just have a simple cut. And you can also edit the length of the clips individually. Sorry, actually, you can only edit the, uh, the length of the individual clips, which controls the, like, say, let's say, the smoothness or a speed or, or, the, or, the, or, or the, yeah, the speed of the clip based on the images that you have added over here, down there. Once you have modified this from 0, 07 to like 10, obviously that transition is going to be much smoother between the two viewpoints. 
Mm. Just to show you one more thing. For example, if we want to enhance, um, we want to enhance a, a, a viewpoint which is an interior view. Of course, since we have a, a collaboration with Twinmotion, they uh, we incidentally found out as graphs of people that there are certain hacks in the system and that you can, you know, go into a workaround and actually, well, use a bug for your advantage, <laughs> which now, and then they turned the bug into a feature. So in 2020, this will be, uh, this will be available out of the box. But how you can add a video now, for example, as a twin motion surface. So uh, the way I am going to do this is uh, you can use this little color bit color picker button everywhere within Twinmotion. And once I have picked up that color up on the TV, it will display the surface for me that it's using. There's no real easy way to bring up this dialog other than using the color picker. But once I have brought it up, I have my, cert, uh, my set of uh, surfaces that I'm using within Twinmotion. And here I have access to creating new materials. If I press on the plus button, my new material appears here. And uh, just, so you, just so that you see, uh, all the time, people tend to click on these three buttons. And this is, I think, the only uh, case when Twinmotion is not that intuitive, because that little more is always hidden, but the more hides those features which you can actually use much more effectively. If you click on that more under the color, that's how you can actually not choose a color, that's how you can choose a texture for your material itself. And under this texture, texture, I can use the copy paste open uh, options. Now I'm going to use the open option and I'm going to look for a material that, I'm, that I want to add. Now here, the options or the possibilities that you see is, is BPM, DDS, G, GIF, JPEG, JPEG, etc. We don't really see a video format over here, but if you look for it, then it should, wait, it should be on the desktop, or if it's not, then, sorry, it's going to be over here. No, it is on the desktop, I just misread it. Is it there? No? Sorry, one sec, I have to check where the video is. Ah, let's do that then. Aha, okay, so if, if I start writing in the name of the actual video, then it does, the MP4 does appear, which then I can actually import as a texture, which then I can use as a, a surface for my TV, which then eventually, if I start to edit, so for example, if I go over there and go to the new material and edit the scale, I can actually place a video right in my twin motion effectively. So this is the way how you can add a video within the file itself. Just a side note that if you have placed that video within, it's actually, so up the box feature is still a box, so on the renderings themselves, the video was super speeded up. So the way that you can actually use it in a rendering is that to slow it down before importing and then it's a real-time video in Twinmotion. That's like a, that's like a, <laughs> you have to slow it down at least by 50%. It's just a, you know, fun thing that we show uh, during these presentations. And, uh, and, and eventually, once I have created these videos, I can export them, which I'm uh, about to do in a second. I just want to explain what BIM motions are. So see here, a BIM motion file has a start point, and if I export my, uh, my file as it is as a twin motion, then this exact view would be um, compressed into one single executable slash DMG file, which then can be sent to the client where they can just uh, explore it and go into the, uh, and just go, up, go around the site and, and, and take a walk through. Over here, the VR option, which is three motions, one of the best features, is not available in a Bimotion file. However, in the 2020, the Bimotion is renamed Presenter, and in the Presenter, you will have the VR option. So that is just a, just a, a side note that this also have been solved in the 2020 version. And once I'm ready, I can, in my video field, I can choose the movie one clip, and then I start the export, and, about, and in about three minutes time, it will export me a video such as this one, and this is, again, an out-of-the-box video that I have created 
within twin motion with of course not 30 minutes editing in the back but maybe like half a day but still it is quite impressing the pizzas are custom objects Okay, so feel free to use Twinmotion 2019 as long as you wish, because it's also a free perpetual license. Again, the 2020 is also going to be a perpetual license, so what you get for 23, you will be able to use as long as Twinmotion 2020 is, is you know, working on a machine, and a continuous delivery is hopefully under the plan. So thank you very much for listening, and Barbara, stage is yours. Thank you.